I am Koketsu Moeti. Um, I am based at Amandla.mobi, which is a community that works to turn every cell phone into a democracy building tool. So, um, local government is my first love. Um, local government is my first love, and given where I come from, we did a lot of organizing around local government issues. And during the time, I happened to get access to a cell phone, which enabled me to access the internet, and we could suddenly um, coordinate um, actions at a large scale. So for example, if we were protesting, we could send bulk SMSs to neighboring communities to shut down their roads so the police couldn't reach us, you know? But there was just the level of coordination that suddenly you could take to the next level that it enabled and got interested in that. Worked for different organizations as I was thinking about what is next, what to do, and thinking a little bit more about this and the possibilities. Essentially, we run campaigns using mobile technology. Um, this enables people to come together, you know, in ways that incentivize accountability. So we have two types of campaigns. We have hyper-local campaigns, which would be um, on issues affecting a specific community. And I use community both territorially and it can be like, you know, a group of similar interests. But then we've also got the national campaigns. So we do this on USSD, which is like the short codes. You know, when you're loading airtime, that star 100 hash, we use USSD, we use SMS, WhatsApp, and back in the day we used to mix, use Mixit too, before the big collapse of Mixit. Yeah, so one of the things we do is our campaigns are focused on issues affecting low income black women in particular. And some of the things we also take guidance from our community, right? So this would be if a particular campaign tactic isn't working, what do people think we should do? What's next, you know? But also just getting a sense of what are the things we should be prioritizing in particular times, in particular moments, during a particular year. Yeah. One campaign that I just don't forget that sticks with me was around Life is City Many, where patients were being forcefully relocated by the state in Gauteng, um, psychiatric patients. And of course, there were many organizations doing stuff. There were people doing litigation and so on. But at the time, we had a campaign that was saying that people should not be relocated because even then we knew the risks, right? It was well documented what the risk would be. What I particularly remember about that campaign is that it was probably one of our least supported campaigns. And I remember, you know, one of my colleagues used to meet with the parents. One of the parents had reached out to us, you know, um, whose child was also facing this forceful relocation. I mean, the desperation and everything, it was, it was hectic. But anyway, a colleague used to meet with the parents, you know, they formed a parent committee and so on. And it was quite devastating what people were going through. What was fascinating was it just gave you so much insight into the prejudice around and the stigma around mental health issues. Um, I remember in one particular space where, you know, I went to go speak about this issue, there were people who you would consider comrades, people who, if it was any other issue, would move along with you, right? Suddenly you heard things like, but they aren't contributing in, to society in any way. You know, the money that's keeping these people in the hospital could be used for schools or this and that, you know? Yeah, I, I just never forget that, you know? It just gives you so much insight. So if I'm with um, some of, and I can give some really good examples, you know, from Luminate to Hewlett Foundation and so on. I think we found donors, we trust is key, right? So I'm talking about um, it's unrestricted funding. We spend it in the ways we know is best to be used, right? Because there are limits with if you were doing it with in South Africa money. Everybody loves accessibility, right? So our mobile work and so on. Accessibility is expensive. <laughs> accessibility is just not cheap. Just as one example with the CSG campaign for the child support grant, you know, on that, I'm not talking about the USSD cost, I'm just talking about the bulk SMSs. We spend 1.2 million on SMS. So yeah, accessibility is lovely, but it's not cheap, right? And you should be able to move. So in this period of COVID, our community more than doubled. The numbers we assumed would come in 2022 happened now. When you work with donors where there's inherently trust, you can use the money in ways that serve the community and the work that you're doing. So this is why I really appreciate the ones we work with. And you've got to trust the people who live the realities. You have to trust the people who do the work or are stewards over the work. Yeah.